Well, hello, welcome to 2021. Uh, it has certainly been an exciting 2020 and the Resident Council has asked me to do a year in review at Friendship Village of Dublin. And of course, what a great opportunity for me to spend some time reflecting on the year. Um, so I have prepared a fun presentation that goes month by month about some of the fun things that we've been working on and I'm excited to share it with you. So um, Andrea is going to help us do some editing. So as I talk through it today, I'm going to be looking at my screen and hopefully you're going to be seeing what, I'm, what we're looking at. So let's take a look back at 2020. So January of 2020 was a uh, exciting start to the new year. We had so many great ideas. Our focuses were going to be on uh, leaning the organization out a little bit, working on some of the technology, taking a little breather from all of the things that we were working on from, 2020, or from 2019, like opening up a new dining room, opening up a new clubhouse. So January, we were all very excited. We were all very, very busy working on, if you recall, the opening of Waterford. So in January of 2020, Jay Dorsey joined our team here at Friendship Village of Dublin as the food and beverage manager. We also had a shift in our owner's rep. So Don and Aaron came in to Friendship Village of Dublin and Dale Weber um, and Miles McClelland exited stage right. So um, we are very, very happy that Aaron and Don are on our team, especially given the challenges that we're gonna all, we've all lived through and we're gonna talk about in a minute. We also had some fun lifelong learning. Bill Hoskett came and helped us do some training. Uh, Jeannie, the picture you're looking at, Jeannie, Ava, Mikey, and Corrine were certified on a stepping on program with COPC. And this program we haven't really rolled out. We were intending to do it in April or May, but this program is a fall prevention program that we have tailored from Friendship Village and also COPC. So you're gonna hear more about it, but. These uh, four awesome people went to some certification for a week to get the training so that we could roll it out. We also hosted our first Nifty to be night, or excuse me, our, our 2020 <laughs> Nifty to be 90 event, um, which is always such a great event. I think we had at that point over 90 people who, were, who are over 90 here at Friendship Village of Dublin. And if you remember a year ago, our theme in the wellness and community life area was the cutting edge and many of you went to the Amazon um, distribution center here in Columbus and learned about how all the packages just arrive at our doorsteps very quickly. So that was uh, a couple of things that we looked at and were excited about in 2020. Then came February, Valentine's Day, and Angie McKeever joined our team as the plant operations manager. And after many, many, many uh, long days, I think it was about 60 days, we were able to get our health, Ohio Department of Health inspection on February 13th, and we moved our residents into Waterford on the 24th, from starting on the 24th to the 28th. So it was an awesome thing to be a part of. Jess and her team had it flawlessly organized. We had um, many of you helped us with a resident buddy so they, you could help make sure that they were comfortable in their new space and had a, a, a friend to help them get acclimated into their new space. So we successfully moved 29 people into Waterford in a week, and which was awesome. And we were super excited about it and uh, having been great. So one of the pictures that you see here is um, Brian moving with his team, a resident um, in there. And if you, re if you remember, we moved between six to eight people a day. So the teamwork there would only be an indication of what was to come. We also held our health and wellness fair and our marketing and sales team successfully launched their CRM, which a new CRM, which we used Salesforce um, in February of 2020. And of course we had our Valentine's Day event. Then shortly after we moved everyone in from Waterford on March 28th, the world changed. So March 2020 started off great. We knew this little thing called the COVID virus was impacting people in China. Never did we think it was going to impact us the way that it did through the rest of the year. But March of 2020, everything changed in the world and certainly here at Friendship Village of Dublin. Um, we started, um, started COVID-19. We also quickly re recognized that we were going to need to pivot on things. Um, and I think if you recall, 
We first provided communication to you on March 3rd or 4th of last year, March 8th. We began to show, tell you, give you some additional communication on what we were doing, locking down the outside doors, making sure that there was one entrance, um, some of those other things. And then on March 13th or 14th, the world, the world changed here at Friendship Village of Dublin and we um, closed our doors to our, any visitor for that time. We only thought it was going to be for a couple of months. Never in a million years would we have thought it was going to be the rest of the year. But there we are. So in addition to all of the things that started COVID, uh, before we were able to initiate and communicate the reorganization of the plant department, so Steve started working on the construction project, which really has and is a full-time job. Angie McKeever started to lead the maintenance department, and Andy uh, was promoted to become our enhancement manager, overseeing both landscaping and also the refurb that we lovingly now call enhancement. So that was a nice achievement in March. Um, we were able to finish up our modified rates agreements um, with our flats and villas um, with, that we had been working on for about a year. And we reintroduced the villager. So I know we had um, Jeannie and her team had reorganized that and it's hard to believe that it was just a year ago that we reintroduced the villager. So I know that many of you enjoy that very much. So then COVID came, everything changed. Your love of styrofoam started, your love of all things COVID like mine started. Um, we heard Ohio was very progressive in the early days with the coronavirus. We were all glued to wine with the wine and Dr. Amy Acton, who was telling us about Swiss cheese and how we take a layered approach to, to prevent COVID from coming into the community. Uh, and it was a, a huge, big effort. And I think those early days were really hard. They were also, we took some pretty decisive action very early. And I think that's some of the reason that we were so successful for so long is because we were, we were the first that I'm aware of to start wearing masks, all of our masks that we love. The word social distancing came into our vocabulary in March of, of 2020. So it certainly is a month that we'll reflect on uh, as we go through the rest of this year, but pretty exciting things. So April came and we knew we had to do things differently, right? We all learned how to do Zoom. I remember our first Zoom happy hour and having to work through and click on the link and turn your volume on and all of those good things. But we did it and we learned and that's such a great thing. Um, we had our first associate who tested positive for COVID and that was quite a deal. Remember contact tracing and what should we do and how should we do it and all of that. Um, we hosted a works hub training virtually because that was one of our goals in the beginning of the year was to be able to be a little bit more progressive and a little bit more um, retrospective in our, in our quality of our work orders, how long it takes, what the process was. So our, our housekeeping and maintenance teams, in addition to several of our leadership team members, were on a um, virtual for three days training with Works Hub. Doesn't get much more exciting than that, but that did occur. We had our first outdoor and virtual fitness classes. So I don't know if you all remember putting on your coats last year and bundling up and going outside to do some classes with Jill and Mikey. This is the month that we evolved fun. So remember fun if back in the day was a daily event um, where we had Mikey and Jill do a virtual class for us to keep us all healthy and engaged. And we also had some, some a lot of events um, that we could do. We traveled to the national parks. We traveled and learned about Franklin Roosevelt. We did a lot of really fun things in those fun um, newsletters. We also hosted a pizza party, but not one that we would normally think of where we could all be together, but Jeannie arranged for Jet's Pizza to deliver a pizza and some wine and a salad. And I know that that was a huge hit for all of you. You really loved that and I think really missed being together. And it was just a little bit of a ray of sunshine in a really hard time. Jeannie and her team also are ones for turning lemon into lemonade and they hosted a, a Western day. If you remember, the saloon was the River's Edge Cafe. 
we all dressed up in our cowboy and cowgirl gear and uh, we had a little fun together. So that was really fun. And then also that month we recognized our great associates with Rockstar Day, um, which gosh, our associates have been extraordinary rock stars in this year. So April was a, another exciting month. I don't think we would have ever assumed that we would be in love with Zoom or be so good with Zoom. So May came uh, and we were able to open up our new maintenance shop that if you remember Taylor had started, Taylor Darby who was here had located the area in the basement. Andy and his team along with Steve and Jeff and the maintenance team were able to do some construction down in the basement. They were erected shelves. Everything was automated in that each each area had a bin with a barcode. If you pulled something out um, that we needed to reorder, you could barcode it and then it went into the Works Hub or the HD Supply. So a little automation into a practice. The old maintenance shop um, was there for, for almost 40 years. So it was quite exciting when we left. Lots of fun, different things, but we were able to clear that out. Andy and his team were able to revitalize that and that became the new culinary dry storage. So that was very exciting. Um, we hosted a virtual open enrollment for our associates in the month of May, and we started our bocce season. So I know many of you really enjoyed that, and it was maybe the highlight of the year. So much fun to be outside with each other safely, enjoying our new outdoor fitness area to include bocce, so that's wonderful. We had our first ever Mother's Day parade. And wow, that was so awesome, wasn't it? All the cars that were coming, all the family members that we've missed so much, and the grandkids, and sitting outside on that. It was sunny and still a little chilly, seeing all those cars that just kept coming and coming and coming. And I think it shows the incredible amount of support we have from our community, from our family, from our friends, from our associates, and how really loved we have been. So that was a really great day. And then all of you helped us. Um, I, th I think thanks to Dick and Marcy Gast, write an individual thank you note to our associates who at that time had been sh out of their roles and doing things that were not in their job description in new ways. And I know that was a very touching thing for our associates. And again, another reason that brings our community together. So that was very, very kind. And then it's hard to believe that we dedicated outside wearing masks our Celine, or her, Celine Garden, um, which I think has bring, brought us all a lot of solace and we've really enjoyed this year. Of course, Andy and his team did a great job and Joan was not here to, to recognize or be recognized for her incredible contributions to this area, but I think with her and Andy, with her vision and Andy helping pull that vision together, that space is, is absolutely incredible and the cone flower with the bee, I know, has brought us a lot of joy and I think all of us have used a thank you note or two that Richard Bellevue took some photographs of to use. So it's been, March was a, or excuse me, May was a fun month too. Then came June. It's hard to believe, it's hard to top all of these things. But in June, after months and months and months of um, waiting, we hired Lee, who is our, now our Strategic Communications and Marketing Director, who started on the 28th of June, and Kevin Mills, who is our Sales Director, he started on June 8th. And I think this is a really great way, or a really great place to recognize Angela Vogan, because Angela, as you all know, had twins uh, the last week in 2019 and was on maternity leave until what well, was supposed to be until around April, but obviously COVID, COVID came and she came out of maternity leave early to help us because we knew how important it was. She knew how important it was and I think she'd tell you that her team needed her. So she was awesome and came right back and helped us, but this is a great example. Kevin and Lee were just kind of waiting in the wings for us and we just needed Angela to pull us together and get these two new team members here. So. We were really excited about them. You know, we often talk now about Kevin and Lee don't know what pre-COVID life was like here at Friendship Village of Dublin. So I think they are more excited than all of us to see how great and vibrant our community is. Um, we did finally relocate the plant shop in, in June. 
Um, and we kind of talked about that a little bit. We hosted our first socially distanced beer brats and, and buddies event outside. And it was uh, traditionally would have been our summer picnic where we would have had our associates together with our residents and had a really fun, great time. But again, life is a little different. So we adapt and we rolled. And I think we all had a really great time sitting outside. Um, Don and his team were able to put our, our brats in one of our favorite things, a styrofoam container. We sat outside, we had a couple beers. We were so fortunate to have such a nice day. The sun was out. And I think more than anything, we were just so happy to be together outside, seeing each other, having a little bit of fun. So that was a really fun day. Um, some other things that we did in the health center, we implemented what we call the PCC comms program, which is more of a comprehensive approach to how uh, we do the documentation, which will help us in the survey process and also help to make sure that we're providing a really good continuity of care in the health center. Um, and we started working on automating all of our independent living processes. So emergency responses, our, our intention was to put everything in the medical records so that we can roll that, have a, a nice packet available for you when you go to the hospital. We started it in June, we're still working on it, but it is on our radar to continue to work on. And then it's hard to believe we hosted our first farmer's market here at Friendship Village of Dublin. Jay and Tim did an awesome job bringing in really nice, fresh, local produce for us. I think we had strawberries some weeks, we had corn, we had melon, we had bread, we had jams. Um, and it was just really fun to be all together outside getting some really nice fresh produce to use and to supplement the meals that were coming to your apartment or are coming to your apartment in your favorite styrofoam container. So that was really awesome. And then Betsy helped us get into the big give for the first year. And um, through your very generous contributions, we, we raised about $14,000 the through the the Columbus Foundation for Friendship Village of Dublin that went into our benevolent funds. So I hope that we can continue that great giving tradition here at Friendship Village. Um, oh, and how could we forget? We had Rita Doherty Day too, which was certainly so much fun and I'm so appreciative of it. But as we know, I have work with the best human beings and who are dedicated and kind. So it was a nice day to be able to recognize the great work that had been done and again, all be together outside. And then we had Father's Day at the end of June, where our fathers um, and male figures in our lives were given some really fun socks. And if you remember, we all walked around with crazy looking socks on for a couple of days. And I think that was a, a really fun event. We also had um, a, a music and a barbecue outside, again, just for our dads and our, our good adoptive dads. So then we came to July. In July, um, we welcomed Aaron, who is now our culinary executive chef. And it's hard to believe that it's been six months since he's been here. But we certainly were very, very excited that he joined our team. And I think you've seen some of the fruits of his and his team's labor over the last six months recently. Tom Jeffire also started as our IT manager. Poor, poor Tom. <laughs> and then, um, we had the National Guard at Friendship Village of Dublin in July to help us do our very first COVID testing at Friendship Village. There were, I think, six or seven groups of National Guard people here. We tested our associates on that day, and it would be a nice little foreshadowing of the amount of testing that we would see coming in the, in the next several months. So that was a pretty fun, scary, exciting day. Um, we also had a COVID style reception for our scholarship winners. Again, traditionally, we would have a lovely outdoor event or indoor event. We would all be able to celebrate the incredible associates that we have and how they're doing great things with their lives and how they're impacting us. And we were able to provide some financial contributions so that they could continue their education and continue to enrich lives as they go into their careers. So we were able to recognize these eight individuals um, who received a 2020 scholarship. So we were thrilled to be able to do that. We did it virtually. I think it was a stair step into our virtual world. We recorded it. Um, Betsy and Andrea did a really nice job of putting that together. And then, believe it or not, remember we had stopped construction back in March 
because no visitors or guests were allowed back in the building. But we found a way under the leadership of Don McCarthy to work with Rosilli and JMM to separate any person in a construction area from all of you. That was the most important thing when we started talking about re starting restarting construction was to have some space, some airflow, so that the construction workers were very separate from you. So we constructed uh, some temporary stairs in front of the Muirfield room, the new Muirfield room in front of the main entrance, and also in the back Muirfield room, which is the loading dock, to get into what we now call the Brandywine Fitness and the spa and the Muirfield room. So those two areas started um, so that we could work through that. And of course, we really, really, really loved being outside with um, each other and our putting greens. We no longer give high fives or handshake, but we've all learned the value of an air five five and also a good elbow to keep us safe and make sure that we can recognize this. I also want to draw attention to the outdoor events that Jeannie and her team put on. I think it was um, really hot in the summer, so we had to adapt midday versus morning, but the entertainment that was provided to try and keep us having a little bit of fun through the summer was pretty extraordinary. So you'll see this picture over here in, in July, which shows many of you sitting outside on our rented white chairs that could enjoy each other's company, being outside socially distanced. So July. And then came August. In August, we opened our reception desk. Remember, for so long, we were in the library in, in as right as we came in. And again, it's hard to think about those days, but I remember how excited I was to have those, that new reception desk. And then through that, we were able to reopen the library to have it be a full library so you can walk in and out as opposed to just one side. In August, because we had no cleaning for many, many months, um, many, many weeks, I guess it wasn't months, we, our environmental services team, led by Seth, were able to do a deep cleaning of our apartments. So everybody worked really hard. We were able to clean all of your apartments in, a, in a, a larger block of time. And that's a tradition that will continue. It did replace the twice a year cleaning. We weren't doing a very good job with it. There was too many of you and too little of us to do a good job. So now we've pivoted to once a year having a really good deep clean in your apartments and this was the first year for that. Um, we kind of already talked about the health center launching the comms program, but that went into full force um, in, in July and August. And then thanks to Andrea, we purchased some equipment and we hosted our very first virtual town hall. Town hall is one of my favorite days of the month because I get to sit and be in a room with all of you and answer good questions and communicate what's happening in this community, this great community that we have. And I love the energy of the room. And through COVID style, we knew how important that communication was, but we obviously couldn't be together. So Andrea, uh, if you remember those early days of town hall, we did it on a cell phone and you couldn't hear us and it's hard to see. So Andrea really led um, the efforts to make sure that our, our virtual town halls were polished and professional. And I think I've heard many of you say that that's been one of the most impactful things for 2020 is the virtual town halls and how you enjoy watching them in your apartments and if you need, you can hear better. Um, so maybe that's something we'll continue. Maybe we'll stream it. Maybe we'll do something else in 2021 when we can all be back together. But August was our first month of a virtual town hall. And then I think maybe the highlight of the year was the alfresco dining in our legacy courtyard. And Jay and Don and Aaron, I think, knocked this one out of the park. Andy put up, strung up those, Andy and his team strung up those lights. We put the, the beautiful flowers and the, the big planters out there. And I think there's not a better place in town to have an outdoor meal. So I, I think that is definitely a tradition that we're gonna continue when the weather gets back. And I know you all really loved it too, so. That's wonderful. And then how could we forget the street fair? So Jeannie and her team, again, socially distanced, finding a way for us to have a little fun together. We had walking tacos. Many of us had tattoos. Um, we had a dunk tank. We had uh, dart in the balloons. We had, um, I think we had some beer there too. So 
that was a really fun, we had some great music, we had a really good time on that day. So, and then of course, um, in 2020, in August, we were given the recognition to be a top workplace by the Columbus CEO Magazine. So we, were, we received notification that we were, a, we, were, we were recognized in that area. So a huge achievement for our HR team and our associates. And again, so appreciative that they think that this is a great place to work. We value them so much, and it's nice to see that they value all, working with all of you and with us as well. So that was August. September. September, we finished our residency agreements for our entire community. We'd been working through, um, prior, we had about 15 residency agreements at Friendship Village of Dublin. And I had been working for probably most of the year to try and get it down. Now we have six. Um, so that is a really nice addition. It makes it a little easier, make sure that everyone understands what the, what the parameters are of the guidelines, and also make sure that we can live up to the promises that we have promised you when you sign your residency agreement. We started the fiasco of the TV conversion in September. So if you all remember, our leadership team knocked on your door. We rescanned your TVs um, in the Asheron, the Health Center, Brandywine, and also uh, Waterford. We knocked on your TV. We, we transitioned from retirement home TV to senior TV, and we thought, oh, this is it. We've got it. We can do this. Little did we know that the TV, TiVos that were promised were going to become a, a, another exciting thing for us to work on in 2020. But we started the, the transition in 2020. Uh, we also launched our fiber network, which again, I think is a really great thing. Your Wi-Fi, um, your additions to your Wi-Fi, the streaming of your TVs and the capability of that. It was just setting the foundation. We know we still have some work to do on these areas, but having the fiber installed in the building has been a, will be a huge um, asset to Friendship Village as, we, as the technology changes, as we change, and as we come out of COVID and get our ducks in a row and have a little extra time to work on those things. The renovated admin offices opened. So if you remember, Andrea, Jeannie, and I were in A104, and then we transitioned and added Craig and Seth into our admin team. And we now have nice new offices, um, now cluttered with boxes and COVID fun things, but that was a, a nice transition. And then, of course, the highlight of September is always Active Aging Week. Jeannie and her team always knock it out of the park. This year was certainly um, different, given the, the, the events of the month, the year, and very much COVID style. But we were able to celebrate um, a theme of Ohio. So we went to Cincinnati. We went to Cleveland. We stayed in Columbus. We went to the Great Lakes. Um, and we went to Amish country. So we were able to, to virtually go and have some, some fun events around that. I think the highlight for me was the wiffle ball and also the horse and buggy um, here at Friendship Village taking us all on, on horse and buggy ride, which I think many of us, that was the first time we had experienced that. So Jeannie and her team always do a great job and we always love that week. So you're gonna see lots of pictures. We could certainly reminisce on that. It was a really fun, um, different week, but certainly one that we all enjoyed. Betsy um, worked with the Kramer and Associates and the Charitable Giving Group here at Friendship Village and from a board perspective, and we, we concluded the strategic plan for charitable giving. If you are on that charitable giving committee, you have seen that plan. It's kind of a plan over the next three to five years of how we can do some additional fun things um, with maybe our new buildings or the benevolent fund and making sure that we have some funds for that. So Betsy and her team worked on that. We welcome some new people into our community. Angela Rose started at Friendship Village as our assistant director of nursing in the health center. And Priscilla Perez also started as our licensed social worker in the health center. And some other fun things were we completed the dining at a glance. Um, so if you remember, we would give you a menu for the bistro. We would give you a menu for the river walk. We would give you a menu for the legacy. And it was just so hard to figure out what was where. So Kristen Mathias um, was able to put it into a nice big 11 by 17 piece of paper. And now we know where we can get some, a variety of food options. I think starting in September, I think we now offer 28 to 30 
meal options a day for you to choose from. So, and then Craig completed his first ever virtual audit, um, which we were very fortunate was a clean audit, um, thanks to Craig and all his, his great work with his team to keep us financially safe and sound and reporting in the appropriate ways. So here's some, some fun Active Aging Week pictures that I'm sure you've seen. Okay, then came October and the weather started to get a little cold and we were just worried about how we were gonna bring you inside safely and figure out how we could keep COVID out of the community, keep working on trying to keep you all safe and try to keep you engaged. And certainly it was a, it was a very exciting um, October, a little scary if I remember correctly. We also communicated effectively, we think, about the challenges that we had in the kitchen and how we were going to start a major kitchen renovation and all of the food was being prepared in the legacy dining room kitchen for the entire community. And what a challenge that has been. And, and I think Aaron and Jay and their team have done a bang up job. And now as I stand here on the 8th of January, we are just about a week away from that kitchen renovation being completed. So you can, when you put your mind to anything, you can get through anything, right? The residents uh, on the decor committee helped me create the new or pick out the new FF&E for the health center. So the new chairs, the new bedspreads, the new curtains, the new, um, what else did we pick out? The side chairs, the flooring, those types of things with the assistance of M&A, which it's always fun. I really love and appreciate the residents helping make these decisions because this is your home and we want you to feel comfortable in it. The mirror field room opened. And it's, I cannot wait to be able to use the mirror field room in all of its glory and be in there. But we, it's, it's, it's snuck it up on us that it was completed. Um, Dr. Barlow educated us via some virtual lectures, which I think might be one of my highlights of 2020. And you can see in this picture, you can see the inner workings of where I'm standing now. So. Um, our backdrop that Lee helped us put together, the lights, the, the microphone, the microphones here, the camera, um, the, the behind the scenes of how it all comes together. But certainly Dr. Barlow can just take us to a different world um, with his, his stories and his education and all of that. So we loved that. Um, we conducted our associate residence, or excuse me, associate satisfaction survey in 2020, which was, um, pretty fun. We did it virtually, we did it with links, and we actually just got the results back and we did, we did pretty well. So there's some areas that we're going to share with you in the coming uh, weeks. And finally, through the incredible generosity, I think led by the resident council and Jean Forbes, the community donated a thousand pounds of food and four thousand dollars to the food bank. So extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary that we through these really deep, hard days, we're able to share such great light with people who really need it. And I think that's just a testament to this incredible community that we have. So the other thing that I really loved, um, and I'm not sure if it was October or November, I wasn't sure, was our weenie roast and our marshmallow roast. So that was really fun to be outside. A little chilly, but I think it was really fun to roast the marshmallows, sit around a fire, smell the fire, um, and listen to some great music. November was the month of thankfulness, and obviously Thanksgiving, very, very different than in years past, right? For all of us, but especially it's hard for most of us who have traditionally celebrated Thanksgiving by cooking and being together with our families and friends and us hosting them here at the community and you going out, and obviously with the COVID world that we live in, that was not possible. So. Um, we, Jay and Don, were able to find a safe way to social distance so that you can enjoy your Thanksgiving meal here at Friendship Village. You ate in the Legacy Dining Room, some of you ate in the Mirrorfield Room, separating it so we could clear the air, make sure that the air was not a, a possibility because we know, we thought, we don't really know that COVID spreads via uh, the air. We also conducted our first ever virtual marketing event, so that is wonderful. And uh, Danielle Williams started as our administration director. The Brandywine Fitness Center opened. So again, we haven't really had a great opportunity to use it, but it's a beautiful space and we're looking forward to that. And then of course, our turkey trot, led by our dear turkey, Mr. Mikey, 
was uh, a fun way to get us out. And we also celebrated Veterans Day together, again virtually, but that's such a special day here for us at Friendship Village. So another incredible thing with 2020 and the, the generosity and the gratitude that we've been able to have here is all of your incredible donations to our employee um, assistance and also our employee appreciation funds. I think under the leadership of Jack and Pettit and the resident council um, in that committee, wow, just incredible that we were able to give you, I had nothing to do with it, you were able to be so generous to our associates who, again, in a really hard year, really appreciated and, and leaned on some of those additional funds that you gave them so they could celebrate Christmas with their families and do some a nice thing for themselves. So a very heartfelt thank you for that. And then again, our world changed on December 3rd. So if you recall on December 3rd, we had um, our surveillance testing for our associates and residents showed us that we had COVID in the building. So after months and months and months of being proactive and being safe and keeping our community safe, COVID did penetrate in early December. So we got to work um, and certainly it was not maybe what we had wanted. We did have several residents pass away from COVID. Several more were infected with COVID. Several associates were infected with COVID. They were very hard, hard days. And um, some that I think will forever change some of us that were in those health center in those days. So I think um, it's hard to reflect on the year without maybe giving it some time because it's been so fresh. But, you know, I think personally, I spent hours and days, 12, 14, 16, 18 hours a day in the health center. And what I think I learned is that the spirit of this community is just extraordinary. And our associates are extraordinary. And I just love it. It's, you know, I don't love that we were in that situation. But the fact that we could pull together and, and work together and the cards that you wrote to our um, residents and associates who were working were pretty awesome. So it was those were hard, hard days. We're not over them yet, but certainly some of the most impactful days of 2020. We also had some good things that happened in 2020. So we opened our spring water salon. Again, many of us haven't had an opportunity to see it or use it. But it's there, it's beautiful, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and I can't wait for it to become part of our everyday norm. We had, um, we had our first Christmas in the Legacy Dining Room and also the Mirrorfield Room. I think that was a really great event as well. We met Friendly the Elf, who even in those dark days, I loved seeing where Friendly was gonna be in the community. Friendly came and showcased our community. We followed him around. We tried to find him during the day, and he helped us showcase what a great community Friendship Village of Dublin was. We also hosted 12 Days of Christmas virtually um, through our food, through some of our activities, through some events that were delivered to our door, or some, um, some treats that were delivered to our doors. And probably the most important thing of 2020, our health center residents, our assisted living residents, and about 50% of our staff here who elected to take the COVID-19 vaccine were given the COVID-19, were given the vaccine on the 29th of December. So that was pretty great. And then if you just sneak right a couple more days into the, the first of the year, obviously all of you had your experience with getting your vaccine on the fourth. So certainly has been a really fun year. As I was putting this together, I was reflecting on everything that has happened and how many fun things we did and how different life was, but somehow we just came out of it and we came out of it and we're gonna be stronger for it. And the thing I think that I felt, felt through this theme, and I'm gonna get a little emotional, is that uh, there's just such a great, amazing culture here and it's incredible. I'm so happy to be here. I hope you feel the same way. I think Betsy implementing this friendship and gratitude program this year, there couldn't have been a better year for it because it has been a year where we've had to lean into that friendship. We've had to find the gratitude in our days, but somehow we did it and we did it together. So I think we're all looking forward to better days in 2021 and I'm confident we're gonna do it and I'm confident we're gonna learn some things from 2020. Never again do we wanna live 2020 again, 
but I think we're gonna come out of it stronger. And I hope you've had a little bit of fun. I hope that you feel great about living at Friendship Village of Dublin. We love having you here and happy 2021.